Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. Hey everybody, welcome back to another amazing episode of For the Love of Money. I am so pumped for my episode today because we are going international and we are talking to sensation Janisha Allura from Singapore. Now, before we do that, I need to remind you that Lori's World Famous Bliss Project Weekend is coming up right away in the beginning of March and we are down to just about 10% of the tickets left. So if you've been putting them off for a Christmas gift or if you've been putting them off you know, just to make sure that uh, you buy them at the right time, now is the right time. If you're curious, go to theblissproject.info. Again, it is theblissproject.info. Those last few remaining tickets are gonna be gone before you know it, so do not wait too long. This is gonna be a record turnout this year at the Bliss Project. And are you ready for this? It's going to be the first chance to see and to get your hands on Lori's new book. So again, theblissproject.info, all the information is there, including how to buy those last few tickets that are left. Now, Janisha Lura is the founder of this incredible women's empowerment and entrepreneurial group called The Soul Rich Woman, and it has spread like fire through East Asia. She has over 10,000 women subscribed to this private group. Imagine 10,000 entrepreneurial motivated women all learning and paying it forward. That's what she's created. But here's the cool part. She actually has an incredible story about growing up in Singapore where she had to start working at the age of just 14 years old. And when you hear her describe her work day where she would do part work and part school, it will make you realize that we can all work a little bit harder. She talks about the incredible lessons, though, that she pulled from that type of upbringing and how she wouldn't trade it for the world and how it applies to your businesses today. She also went on to win Miss Singapore. Can you believe that? But here's the beautiful part of the story. She didn't want to even enter. Her friends talked her into it, and she said that she lacked the confidence to go and participate in it. But she ended up doing it and winning, and she learned so many beautiful lessons about the role of confidence and how we see confidence, and again, how it applies to your business today. So this episode is just loaded with incredible quotes, incredible lessons. Janisha is going to light you on fire. So get ready, listen up. This episode is incredible. All right, Janisha, I am so grateful to have you on, and I'm really grateful that you were willing to get up really early your time. <laughs> <laughs> you were joking before. It's like 6 a.m. your time. Yeah. Well, I promise you it'll be a great interview, and everybody will be really grateful for you getting up early to drop a bunch of knowledge on everybody. Yeah, I, uh, that's my that's perfect. Perfect. All right. So, Janisha, my listeners love getting to know my guests' backstories, typically before we get into all of your great advice. And so, if you don't mind, why don't you kind of share a little bit with us about how and where you grew up? Oh, how and where I grew up? I grew up in Singapore. And basically, I started um, to work at a very young age uh, when I was 14 years old to support myself through school because my family wasn't financially um, really very sound. I mean, I love the sunny island of Singapore um, and, you know, but just that, you know, through my th childhood, you know, many things happened and that made me really resilient in the things I do. Uh, but I really thank God for my great parents, I mean, my parents whom, you know, even through my entrepreneurship journey, you know, they still love me for who I am and they still, you know, are there to support me eventually and up to today. Wow, 14 years old and, and you were already, you know, pitching in and, and supporting yourself. What kind of jobs did you do at 14? At 14, um, I 
started teaching yoga, aerobics, line dancing, um, deep water workout, anything related to fitness and wellness uh, work because that was how we could, I was trained. Uh, I mean, because I, my mother actually managed to save some money to send me for an instructor program. So imagine this. I mean, I wake up 5 a.m. in the morning to go to school. And then after that, you know, I have to go for extracurricular activities, do some project work. And after that, you know, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., I really needed to rest for a while. I can't really have my dinner because you know your food takes some time to digest right yeah so at about um 7 p.m that's when i go for classes and i teach so 7 p.m one class sometimes back to back classes two classes back to back and by the time i reach home is about what 10 p.m 11 and i have not done my homework yet so that went on for many years and in, as a result you know i i look terrible i don't know how to really groom myself in a certain way right because even though i was teaching i was a leader in fitness and wellness classes but you know as a student, I mean, there's so many things that goes on in your life. But nevertheless, uh, this has taught me a little bit about entrepreneurship because along the way, when I was teaching, I realized I needed to expand myself. If I could supply instructors, I could supply trainers to corporate or organizations, I would probably make more, which I did. So that led to my first taste of entrepreneurship. That's amazing. I mean, most adults won't work as hard as, as the day that you just described. And here you were just 14 or, or 15 or 16 years old. You said you did it for many years. So when you were 14, 15, 16, and you were already working this hard, I mean, crazy hours and, and trying to balance it all, did you think it was unfair or did you know that it was preparing you for something great in the future? I felt that at that point, I do feel um, a certain unfairness like you know other kids were shopping other kids were you know relaxing going out with friends they were doing stuff that usual teenagers do however after I mean growing up and where I am today I would not have made it that far with my resilience my mindset and with my, all my experiences and I mean I at the very young age I'm not I, I am not I'm just in my early 30s and I've already so much experiences that I could put on a table and do so much business coaching and um, life coaching with so many people I mean that helped me to connect the dots and and I want to thank for my experience because you are not what you have done you are what you have overcome Ooh, I love that. I feel like we could just end the whole thing right here and people would say, they'd say, A, she works harder than me and B, she just taught me the greatest lesson ever. I absolutely love that. So you worked really hard. You learned a ton of these strengths that you just talked about that you know made you a successful entrepreneur today. But in between then and now, you actually went on to win Miss Singapore. Is that right? Yeah. Um, actually, I mean, to, to be honest, I had no confidence back then however i've got really a bunch of good friends who encouraged me to take my life and journey to the next level so i participated in miss singapore universe i i won running up and then i went on to uh, compete in miss singapore international where i went uh, represent singapore and then i won miss chinese cosmos back in 2011 as well. So I represented Singapore twice in my entire journey and career. And that really opened up doors for me. It taught me leadership. It taught me teamwork. It taught me, you know, to, to it really life open up to a different level. And this taught me that, you know, girls and women, even though among, you know, people say that girls fight women and power, which I totally agree, women with a certain maturity and understanding that, you know, we can come together to cooperate, to collaborate and go to the next level because one woman can make a difference together. We can rock the world. Oh my God. I love it. I'm seriously getting pumped up over here. You're like my, <laughs> my new motivation for, for working harder and doing more. So I've got to ask you, you said something that was incredible. And a lot of women uh, really struggle with this. Uh, you said you did not have confidence at the time, but you entered yes. these competitions anyways, because your friends were encouraging you and you ended up winning all of these titles. So what did that teach you about confidence and what did that go on to uh, serve you later in life? Hmm. So one of the things it taught me was practice makes permanent um, because I didn't know, I didn't have the skills. And 
because at a very young age, I was already acquainted with aerobics, li uh, line dancing, I mean, wellness and fitness skill sets. All these years, my mom has taught me one of the greatest lessons that till today, I still hold on to it, which is to never stop learning and keep investing in yourself. So as a woman, you know, we need to uh, invest in the matter above our neck. I mean, youth is fleeting, right? So as we invest in ourselves above the neck, we will be able to be more skilled because the only way to learn marketing is to, you know, build the knowledge and to build your knowledge. And the only way to build the knowledge is to understand how to become a woman of influence. And if you don't understand how to become a woman of influence, then you can't really uh, understand that I mean really grow to the next level you can really break through because you when you don't invest in yourself you stay stagnant right and you know no progress means slow death wow gosh I love all these quotes all these takeaways that you're giving everybody so <laughs> here's what's amazing is you went on to become the founder of a well-known coffee cafe throughout several countries in Asia now is that right yeah that's right and was that your first big entrepreneurial uh, success story? Having been a consultant, I mean, after, after the beauty pageant, I went on to start an image consultancy firm where I had my clientele was CEOs of companies and decision makers. However, I was still trading time for money. And of course, to a certain extent, um, I did have my first pot of gold where I invested in this cafe business with together with my partners one of the key things that i've learned and picked up in this uh, in my cafe was that we worked as a team because you know i have had failed partnerships before you know i went into six figure debts and uh, it's it's not funny i mean i basically went through shit through my entrepreneurship journey it was ups and downs when I went into the cafe business, I realized that, you know, the past doesn't define our future. Too many times we let our our history hold us back and we give ourselves so much excuses, so much, you know, like baggages and said, oh, oh because this used to happen, therefore um, I am not going to do this. Or oh, because this used to happen, therefore I'm not going to do that. Hey, but have you looked from another perspective where, you know, partnerships could really eventually work out? So. I, I was good with PR and marketing and my other partners were good with operational. The other one was good with franchise and the other one was good with, you know, design and artwork and stuff like that. And a few of us came together to do this um, business and we were a Singapore brand and we grew from one country to three countries. And at our peak, we had seven outlets. In fact, I just exited my business. For me, I sold uh, my business. And to me, it, this is the greatest experience of a lifetime because having to being able to build from scratch from nothing i need to work on the branding we need to work on the whole business model you know and to be eventually be able to exit it really builds on my repertoire of experience and that's why it enhances my level of uh, business coaching that's incredible and so now you've taken that coaching and you're the founder of soul rich women and this is something i'm really excited to talk about what is Soul Rich Women and also Soul Rich Women TV? Okay, so let me give you a bit of backstory how I, I got started with whole, this whole soulrichwoman.com thing because Soul Rich Women is S-O-U-L-R-I-C-H-W-O-M-A-N. So it's a noun, right? It's used to you know, describe a woman who, is, who loves the F word being fabulous, having freedom, and financial independence, okay? So this is this is the whole essence of Soul Rich Woman. And the reason why I got started about all this platform was that first, I was trading time for money, right? I was, you know, even for every hour, I, I work as a consultant, I got paid. So to me, that was not enough. And, you know, I wanted more time, I wanted more freedom because my family is the essence of why I do what I do, my mother, my father, and my younger brother. And I always love to spend time with them. And being, being an entrepreneur, trading time for money is not how I could spend more time with them, how I could travel with them. So I told myself there's something I want to do too, is that when I was trying to do my online business, um, I had so much trouble trying to put the pieces of how can I do an online business 
um, together, you know, and I had no support because they were mentoring in having a great career, right? But it was no really, not really a, a platform that does mentoring for business, like how you find investors, how do you scale your business, how can you exit your business, or how can you b build your brand, right? There was no such um, platform. So I told myself that this is something that I want to do. The next part that caught me really hard as well was that many of the programs out there are just two days three days or maybe just one day and after that what's next so it was a, a, a frustration for me because i spent more than a hundred thousand dollars investing in myself learning and you know to improve my skills and knowledge right but there was no support after that um so back, back then i felt that you know, after a two day, my problems were of, uh, in the business or online business wasn't really there yet. So I felt, okay, I needed to set a certain structure for people to, for women to learn anywhere and anytime online and yet have mentoring at any country, within any country that you are in, in Asia, right, specifically. Uh, you know, we want to be able to do that to support the women in business. So that's how I birthed forth soulrichwoman.com um, because for my love to support women to business women in business to do greater things for themselves because we help women to go from offline to online to build a powerful personal brand. So I have this student or this uh, soul rich woman who is in the fitness business okay she runs a boutique studio you know how traditional businesses are like and they have assets they have like their instagram their facebook and they when they want when she wants to scale right she wanted to open from one boutique studio to two she didn't know how right there was no proper mentoring there was no coaching and you know she came to us and she joined us as a member and then you know she applied the principles um, our systems into her business and she scaled from one outlet to two and she had 1000 leads in within just 14 days and make about $20,000 in sales figure just in one month so when you know when when you a lot of the business owners don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they don't think, they, they don't even know the actual knowledge and systems that out there that could help them to scale their business to become more profitable. So that's how slowrichwoman.com is supporting this business owner. So this business owner who runs a uh, fitness boutique studio now, she's looking to scale in the region. So how slowrichwoman.com, we are helping them is that they because we are in now seven countries so she's thinking of you know um doing i you know there's this you know like how fitness programs are to do she want to use the licensing model so she wants to go into asia so that therefore plugging in into a community for women by women able to plug into this sisterhood alliance network she can move this licensing model across the region because back then when i was running my cafe business you know, to build a franchise system into three countries, we had to build from scratch. And, you know, to do that, we had to hire and pay so much money to do up the entire franchise system. So to be able to give women that platform to have access to resources and knowing that they can seek support, mentorship, and to learn and invest in themselves, that's when, you know, magic happens because... Alone, we are strong. Together, we are unstoppable. Oh, I totally agree. Janisha, I love that you've put this together for women because you're right. People have great ideas, but they don't have the tribe. They don't have the group uh, to, that went first in order to support them. So it, it's brilliant that you put this together. And I, I love that you keep bringing up this concept of investing in yourself. If someone's just mm -hmm. getting started, where's the best place for them to start investing in themselves? Where should they put their time and money? Okay, so first thing first, I think for 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 you, the listeners out there, um, for you, if you want to, you know, you're new and you just want to start out, I always tell tell my my the women in my tribe this: when you are new, you are just starting out. Always, you know, find mentors. I mean, you can go online and piecemeal things together, but you will not know what is the path and direction to go because you're just trying to put things together in your own way. So I 
suggest to you to do this is to find a mentor. So there are three ways for you to find a mentor. I always say this. First, find a mentor whom you can connect with. Find a mentor that you, whom you respect. So this is very important because many people that I meet, they just find mentors out of convenience. They say, oh, because um, this person is so famous, I want her or him to be my mentor. Look, yes, this person may be famous or to at a, at a certain level, but are you able to connect with him or respect with her? Respect her because if the person says something to you or person give you some advice and you can't really receive it that well, so it can't really you know move you to the next step. It can only be some sound or some words to you, but it can't really move you to the next baby step. Also, some of us have pride and ego. I mean some is relative so <laughs> you know you know we have our own ego and you know sometimes when with people we don't respect and we can't connect with whatever they say we're just uh, 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 yeah 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 so one year in and one year out so we don't want that to happen we want to maximize every opportunity for mentorship two when you find a mentor you got to find somebody whom has the skills that you want so you need to look at the outcomes of the mentor Find somebody who has been there, done that. You know, could it be someone who knows how to do personal branding like me, right? For example, I mean, I know how to take you from offline to online and build a powerful online brand. I mean, having just Facebook and Instagram assets is not enough. How do you have a message to target, right? How do you have um, the voice, authentic voice, right? So having such pieces like that help you to really build foundations to of your business you know th and when you find a mentor whom have the skills that you want the third point is you need to find relevant skills or sets that the mentor may or may not have but it's indirectly relevant to the skills so for example i may teach you how to exit your business because i have done it before but maybe it's my network that attracts you so it's not exactly the outcome it could be the network that the mentor has Wow. I so love when you, yeah. So yeah. So don't just look at the direct result of, uh, of the mentor because the mentor has probably gone through a journey that, of failures and successes, and of course has built a network. For example, that could help you to do things. Okay, let me give you a more concrete example. Like for example, I know how to. Okay, I have a mentor who knows how to raise funds. He knows how to bring a company to public list listing, right? Public listed. So I'm actually in. I learned from him. I choose him as my mentor, not because I want to go public listing, even though I'm interested in that piece, but because of his experience in systems and process to bring my business from $1 million to $3 million to $5 million. And I want that network and systems and processes that he has uh, you know, built upon to, to several countries, right? How do I, you know, uh, stop issues like channel stuffing? How can I, you know, connect with the network that he has so that I can grow to more countries? So always look beyond not just the direct outcomes, but also the indirect benefits that the mentor can bring to you. I love it. It's, I feel like mentorship is absolutely key. People, and I love how you said lose the pride and ego and go out and find that key mentor. That is like the fastest way to learn where you want to go. So that's great advice. And I, you, you have brought up a couple of times, and, and I really wanted to ask you about this. One of your biggest areas of expertise is building an online business for people. It's taking people from offline to online. And so there's so many people trying to do that today, and only a few succeed. What is the secret to success in building an online brand? One of the okay, there are to me there are three secrets to success in building a, a powerful online brand. First is to have a mindset of be willing to change because too many business owners don't know what it's like to have an online business. You know, they're so used to the culture, the education is just teaching us, you know, when you work. You know, you get paid, you know, when you pay, uh, when you serve other, I mean, when you do an hour of job, you know, you get paid. So people are so used to the doing work and then getting paid. If they don't work, they are not paid. So one of the biggest things that I always first have to shift all business owners who come through the, the system 
of the woman of influence system through sorichwoman.com is the mindset where I want to get them to always to, to feel used to when they are when they're sleeping, the money is coming in, when they're, you know, having, they meet a, maybe a, some of them have a digital, some of the products that they sell, they're always selling while they are traveling. I always help them to do something like a baby step project first to help them have a feeling of success and wins, small wins of, you know, having that ability to make money while they're traveling, while they're sleeping, while they are, you know, have, uh, you know, as a mother, you know, you have time with your children and money is still coming in. Things are being sold. And that feeling, after building on that, I will anchor that that feeling, anchor that emotion, anchor that resource within them so that they will be able to build on that and then go uh, work on them their other areas of the mindset because with this resource trove, they are more likely to work on other pieces of the online business such as automation, such as ro the robotics part where you you know you have the, the, the funnels and, and stuff. So the mindset is one of the key. The second moving piece in building a successful online brand is knowing that social media is not your marketing strategy. Because a lot of people will think that, yeah, okay, I sell on Facebook and I, and I put on Instagram. And yes, I have um, successful business owners who um, in other countries like Vietnam, because So Rich Woman is also in Vietnam, right? And these women are are, are selling hotcakes, like boutique uh, brands, you know, uh, clothes. They are selling uh, like hotcakes and through Facebook. But to go international, they can't just rely on social media. They need to do uh, a overall marketing strategy as well, you know, and having a great message that can reach their target audience. So the 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 whole piece of the second point is that although social media is not the main marketing strategy, it needs to be, you know, having, I would say two sub points, which is, you know, having a key message, having that voice out there and not just having that tool because these are tools to help us to go from where we want to go. I mean, and to reach out to another two million audience or three million audience, right? It's really just a tool. The second bit to this point is that when you are putting p these pieces together, knowing your audience and niche is so important because sell to everybody, sell to nobody, speak to one, speak to many. The last piece about the you know building a, a very successful brand, okay, uh, which I shared with you earlier on the fitness studio um, that has done, it's all about consistency because now in terms of you know, in the sea of sameness, everybody has a, a, you know, a Facebook page or everybody now has a website. And what will make you different? I mean, among all the green apples, how do you make yourself red? So this piece is ex absolutely important because you want to be consistently showing up, for example, doing Facebook Live. One of my strategy for some uh, a lot of the business owners on in my tribe is to do Facebook live or to do podcasts right because after doing this and it's not just doing once every month or once a year it's about how can you show up consistently one and two how do you repurpose the content so you could do Facebook live just once a month but then what's next right this 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 piece of content just gets drowned in the news feed. So you, you must look into, for example, doing Facebook Live every week or every day. And then from there, right, you repurpose your content into a blog, cut it up into a one minute video, put it on Instagram. Now, because LinkedIn now also accepts video, you can put it up on LinkedIn as well. And then, you know, really make sure that your content goes as far as possible so that whatever effort you do one time, it goes out 10,000 times. I love that, such good advice. Like, you're right, we do have to stand out and it's really hard to do. And so take those Facebook Lives, which by the way, too many people are scared to do Facebook Lives, but they gotta get over it and do it. So take those Facebook Lives and repurpose it. Now you have a YouTube channel, now you have LinkedIn content. Like, you only have to do the live once and you have all these other platforms that you can put it on. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. So is, there, is it different building in the international online space than it is building in just, you know, one or two countries? Do you have to take a lot 
of things into consideration or are the fundamentals the fundamentals? I would say the fundamentals are fundamentals, adding on two more moving pieces, which is culture and language. So having built an international platform with SoRichWomen.com, one of the things, two of the things is the culture. Like uh, women in Vietnam are, I would say in Hanoi per se, they are, uh, you know, in our education system, the women are educated in a way that to stay at home. Because I just, um, we just did a, a talk recently over there and a lot of the feedback that I got from the women in Vietnam, in Hanoi, is especially, uh, they were sharing with me because of their background. Because when they were to do their on online business, uh, if they were to step out to do something out of the norm, which is, you know, besides just taking care of the children and the husband, they were supposed to do the business, there will be stigma. There is a stigma to that. So, you know, knowing all these things, we, we have to approach in different ways in different countries. Like Singapore is a mature market, uh, you know, where online is already every everything and almost everywhere. So then engaging in Singapore market, we will have a use a different strategy. For Malaysia market, when we are there, there are there are like for example, even the online platform to collect money, the Malaysia would be a little bit not say uh, they are still adapting, you know, the, adopting the system of learning how to do, 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 how to do. How to... A different, different country has a, a different pace and different culture. And because my materials mainly are in English, so we do have translators at the different countries when we are there, we're running the workshops, and then we, you know, kind of get translators to come in and then we put the materials online, we translate them. So it requires different... Uh, I would say the fundamentals are still the same, it's just that we need to add on some colors and flavors to it so that we can engage the market directly. Always remember this. Don't just sell, do things because you think it's good for the market. Always be on the ground. And I feel that one of the success of SoWitchMan.com is that we always invite our female entrepreneurs like yourself, you know, and women leaders or aspiring business owners or mompreneurs like you, you know, to really give us a feedback because we are a community driven tribe, right? It's for women by women. It's not Janisha for women, you know? So it's a platform and it's for women by women. So that's the key. So we invite you to contact us and to always give us feedback because we believe that being on the ground, knowing what you want and serving your needs and to be able to help you to go from where you are now to where you want to be is of essence to us, very important to us. And most importantly, you must take the first step to invest in yourself. Janisha, I absolutely love all that. Just just a couple last quick questions for you here. Um, my show focuses a lot on generosity and money mindset. How has generosity mm -hmm. and money mindset played a role in your success up to this point? Wow, I love this question. In fact, SoulRichWoman.com is all about generosity because we believe in giving value first. In the tribe, we always give value. So what we did is we do we do free like live videos, live shows, uh, Facebook Live or Instagram Live. And what we do is we give content away for free. Um, not just any content, anything related to the F word being fabulous, having freedom, and financial independence. So even for women who don't have that level of support, or women who are new, when they listen to our and watch my live shows, I mean, we collectively as a tribe, we have done almost 2,000 episodes um, since 20, I mean, since the last few years, I would say. And for me personally, I've done about 1,000 over episodes, and while the other community leaders have done their Part as well. So what we do is really always give and give and and give and knowing that because the, the society now you know is so I mean con content is so freely given. Many women do come to me and say you know Janisha you're always giving for free when you could you know where we could pay you you know two thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars for this piece of content and then sit down with you and then do a done with you or a done for you and then you know we have so much value. And why do you give away for free? The thing is this. What makes us different is the generos generosity that attracts people to us. 
And because of that, we built a tribe over the years. And that's how the success has been built on. If I had withheld content, what would we all Chinese say? If I want to teach Kung Fu, I will teach you 16 strokes and I'll keep two strokes to myself because I'm the master of Kung Fu. But, me and, but now the times have changed. I mean, it has, it's all about collaboration. It's all about uh, you know, a, a movement where you come together. So as leaders of the tribe and community leaders, we want to you know, continue to give value to the women out there through, you know, as, 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 through the online platforms. I love that. Giving away content for free absolutely is the way to attract people right now. You know, people have this, this feeling like, wow, if this is the free stuff, I can only imagine how good the stuff that she is selling is. And so it's, it's brilliant and it's a great way to give back as well. Where yes, did you get? I, I, want to, wait, I, I have one more thing to add, actually. Uh, it actually uh, it's not just any free content. Uh, it's free content with the experience of the person. I think the, the, the key, one of the other success is, I think, you just just imagine this, okay? Have a picture with me right now. It's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a single person. I can reach 10,000 women. And then when I touch someone else, so I touch you on your shoulder, I empower you, and through your experience and your free content, you reach out to another 10,000 women. And from that woman, she touches another woman's life, and that other woman can touch 10,000 women. So that's why I keep, you know, talking about alone we are strong, together we are unstoppable. Because it's beyond just free content, but how we structure the free content that couples or experiences that makes all the difference. Gosh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So being that you have such a generous heart, can you tell us or share with us one of your favorite all-time moments of giving? We always ask all of our guests this question just to help inspire, uh, you know, more people to give out there. We raise funds to build schools in Indonesia because we believe that education for our children is the future. So in in everything that we do online, whatever the funds uh, that we have, uh, a part of it we donate it and we also help to raise funds to build a specific school. It's called Misi Bangi Bangsa, Sokola Misi Bangi Bangsa School in Batam, Indonesia. So they were from the slums. So this principal, this so-called lady and this husband and wife team has been around for 10 years and their schools were used to be in slum. So just two years ago, we managed to work together with a fund um, that bought a piece of land, a plot of land in Batam, Indonesia. And after that, we started building the school. So now the school serve, which is still half built, it's not fully built yet because we're still in the process, right? So half built school now serves 650 students. Can you imagine this? They can't even afford 20 cents a meal wow. a day. Wow. And their school fees is only $6 a month and they cannot even afford it. Uh, even after subsidy, I mean, we, we do have a, a part of the money that we subsidize a lot of the children in the neighboring um, villages and community who wants to come to the school, you know, and they don't have the money, 20 cents. Gosh, Chris, I mean, when was the last time you used 20 cents to buy a meal, right? Right. So, so, so they can't even afford 20 cents and we want to give them that value. Of course, not all of them are poor. Some of them could pay that 20 cents and six, $6 of school fees or 20 cents a meal, right? But we want to make a difference. And through education, we really believe in that. So now, in these 650 students, they house primary school students and secondary school students. Students. So now we want to see how to graduate them to college by working with, uh, you know, uh, surrounding polytechnics or universities to so that these students, these kids, have a path to to go. Because if not, after secondary school, they will you know, have no place to go. I mean, because they already can't afford, right? So what makes you think they can go to other schools that's, uh, you know, that's around? So we want to be able to build a, a system. Right now, um, the school space is still not enough because there are a lot of students on waiting lists. So we want to continue to make a difference because, you know, children is our future. Wow. I love that. That is such a beautiful thing that you guys are doing that. And it is, you're right. It is so needed. Thank you for being such a, a strong giver. So right before I ask you the last question, 
I want to know where can everybody find you and your programs and all of your knowledge? Wow. <laughs> well, I would like to invite you to join me on a journey at soulrichwoman.com, spelled as S-O-U-L-R-I-C-H-W-O-M-A-N. Now, on this, uh, I would like to give you a free gift, which is how you can build an online business in five steps. So in this um, video series, I do share with you how, you know, I use this five-step system that helped me to build my million-dollar online business. So I invite you to join me at soulrichwoman.com. SoulRichWoman.com, and you are giving away the five steps that helped you build your million dollar online business. I absolutely love it. So, everybody, make sure you go to that website and check that out. We all love free information. You just talked about it before the right free content to the right people. When they pay it forward, this world becomes a better place. So, here's the yeah. last question for you, and, and we thank you so much for your time and your knowledge. It's been incredible so far. Why should people be unapologetic? about their pursuit of wealth and success? Wow. People should be unapologetic because you deserve so much more. Because when, you know, why play small when you can be living the destiny that you truly deserve? So live life by design, not by destiny. Because if you are here... One life is really short. So in, in my recent one, because I interview a lot of um, celebrities and big names, one of the guys that I've interviewed is Gary Vaynerchuk. So Gary actually told my audience, I asked him, so what is the one advice that you would give my audience? So this, this piece of content is on my website, so you guys go and check it out, okay? Um, Gary said that, you know, you only live once. Like, duh, yeah, okay, yes, we all only live once. Well, he said this, go live Go and look at regret. You know, don't live life of regret. Go and go to a home of elderly and go spend time with them for a day and look into their eyes and ask yourself, what is in your eyes? Is it a life of, of abundance, a life of joy, or a life of regret? So would you want to live your life of regret? So this will sum it up whether you want to continue to stay uh, apologetic or unapologetic. Oh my God, I love it. Do you want to live a life of joy or a life of regret? It's an obvious answer and it's just one of a million really good answers that you gave everybody in the past half hour. So Janisha, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time and your knowledge and your wisdom. I know a lot of people are gonna benefit from this and I can't wait for them to check out your programs. Thank you for being on with us. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.